What is up YouTube and all my fish keeping friends? How is everybody doing out there in fish tank land? Today I want to share with you a whole bunch of new cichlid fry that we have on the cichlid rack and I also want to find Amber and take you guys outside and show you some of the new fish that she's put in grow out tubs out there in the backyard. Well, I hope you guys are all enjoying your 4th of July. Uh, if you guys did not see the video that I put out yesterday, go ahead and check it out. But uh, I set up this scape over the last two days. Look at this. This is really nice, I think. Um, I don't know how natural it looks. It looks a little funny from this side, but I'm obviously going to be critical. That one rock just doesn't look right. But um, anyways, I think it's a fun little scape for now. Uh, we're still playing around with plant ideas, thinking some kind of, uh, some grasses on the sides and grow all the way up to the top and some kind of a, a dwarf hair grass or something up here in the front. Maybe shrimp. Amber's got a goby that she really wants me to put in here, a lipstick goby. So that might go in here. I don't know. She's pushing pretty hard for me to put it in here. Let's go ahead and go downstairs. Let's find Amber. Take a look at all these fish on the rack. We're going to do a little bit of a feeding and then uh, if I can get her to take me outside, I want to show you guys the new fish that we got outside. What's up Amber? What you doing? Uh, we're feeding and showing everyone the tanks, I think. Yeah, totally. I want to see all these cichlids, but first, we can uh, because you're feeding. We we'll take a look at everybody here on the tetra. We got the tetras well, up top, right? You and the said respirator. wait on the cichlids, but if we're going to be feeding this, we actually start with the cichlids. <laughs> oh, the ice, the ones that are in isolation up the, at the top. The ones that are in isolation. That some of them are going to be paired up, repaired today. The albino crevensis are being repaired today. In another tank because we have males we need to put in them. We have a Hong Slong eye and a Borelli eye that I did not expect to spawn, and they did. And I had to pull the males, so now they need a little place to go. And that's actually part of why I have the five gallons, is because when you're breeding pistogrammas, it's nice to have a place to separate any cichlids really. So the cichlids, for the most part, get frozen brine shrimp because I've actually found blood worms cause them to bloat. And if you want to get cichlids to really breed and be very colorful, I, I find whole foods, meaning something that's not processed. So like dried food is processed. It's mixed with other things, ground up. It has brine shrimp in it, but it's not the whole food product. Right. And speaking of, this is one of the... Uh, Males, he's not going to eat in this, but he's one of the reasons the, the uh, Curbensis up there are being repaired because I need his tank space. Pretty much everyone on this rack that is a nano community fish gets my powdered food mix. It's like, I don't know, 20 or 30 different foods. I need to clear up the duckweed. Do you see this? This is one of the times That's when duckweed, duckweed becomes an issue. Well, it's, yeah, when it actually starts to grow inside of the feeding ring and um, clogs up the feeding ring. Yeah, there's food in these tanks. They just can't get it because the duckweed. The kochu are fun to watch eat. Let me lower this so you can see. Actually, I have my pen light right here. Let me try to, because these guys are beautiful. Is that showing their colors at all? Oh, yeah, just a little bit. They have this I blue mean, purple this, yeah. that when the duckweed isn't impeding. When they, yeah, when they move just right, you can see the blue and the purple a little bit. They're gorgeous. That's for sure. The embers next door are also very, very pretty. But I need to come in here in the next couple of days and clean out a bunch of duckweed and throw it. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out what I'd like to put in there, and I've been asking people what I should put in the 10-gallon in my office, and ember tetras are definitely on my list. I'm still thinking about it. My vote is the goby yes. that has been sitting in quarantine. We have yeah, no, a no, red no. lipstick goby who really would like an enclosure and she's very friendly. Um, this is my Cinemugia Illuminatus. This male's gorgeous. I lost his female a little while back, but he is a stunning fish. Um, Heterendria, which the females are show right now, the females are posturing off. People don't realize they can be very aggressive with each other. Yeah, it's really hard to catch these on camera because they are so small. But yeah, they're going at each other a little bit. Oh, yep. There she a goes because she knows it's food time and she yeah. wants the front spot. The grinder mix goes to all the schooling nano fish, but the peacock gudgeons right. 
and the uh, blue baddis, so baddis baddis, right, these right. guys will not eat it. These guys will only eat frozen food or live. And the gudgeons, they don't really like dried. And I really do enjoy my females. If you look there, they're quite pudgy and beautiful. They need a boyfriend too. So if anyone knows where I can find a one and a half inch male peacock gudgeon, please let me know because compared to my finger, these are some big guts. Yeah, they're big. For they are mm -hmm. very big for peacocks. They're like the size of a uh, imperial. Mm -hmm. a so you're people... putting in just the mix, and we're gonna do a video on the mix. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do a video on that. I'm gonna get you to share These emerald eye reservoirs. Secret mix are very. Mm -hmm. See, it's not so much a secret. No, but, but it's a nice blend, and it, it works, works well. very well. They have these sides that when light hits them, they're like silver. But then when the light is gone, the eyes turn blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. The strawberry respora are exactly what I was thinking about putting in the office tank. It's something like this, a small nano fish. They're so small. They don't get much bigger than this, do they? Uh, no, these are adults. And if you look to the right, I actually am a collector of Barreras, so those are um, Phoenix resbora. These are all related to the chili resbora. And then That's my really all-time cool. favorites, actually, I'm going to feed them, and I'm going to move the duckweed so you can see them, because I love these, and I think they're an underrated little rasbora, and very, very colorful. I have a few males in there that are so red in the fins. I think they're beautiful. The glow lights and the black neons are like, can we have food? <laughs> we would like some food, please. Yeah, I like the black neons. I want to get the Imperials... Uh, spawning before it's I incredible mess with these, but how much those look like a miniature imperial? Yeah, totally. So Amber, what are these up here? I keep getting confused on these ones. Those are actually one of my favorites. They're a volcano resbora, and they're one of the largest species of resbora. They're very timid. They might very. think that they're hungry, and they know me, and they know that oh, I have yeah, they're very timid. food. Food helps. Very timid. And I'm going to try to show you guys. I you love that reflection. Yeah, oh, you can see like it without light. anything. And then actually speaking of beautiful fish, right now the lemons and the flame back bleeding hearts are looking absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to feed them. I love the combination of these two species. Isn't it cool to watch them? Because during the day they school together and then when you feed, the lemons go high and the flame mm -hmm. backs go low. And it's so odd, but it goes so well, just the, the colors of the two. And they do separate for a little bit and then when it comes to food though, they come together. Mm -hmm. It also keeps aggressions pretty even. Okay, so what everybody really, really probably wants to see is all of the new babies, all of the new fry that are in the house right now that are on the watch cichlid us. rack. So this is one of the things about apistos that Joseph said recently in a live stream is you need to watch them. They seem like they're getting along, but they keep getting testy with each other. Now that is a first time female who had eggs a few days ago, and I thought she ate them, but I'm starting to think she's just a negligent mother. Because if you look, we have other females on the rack who definitely have eggs, like this female Hong Slung Eye. I'm not entirely sure on the pronunciation, but she's out front and center, so you'd think she doesn't have eggs. She's also fully colored up, and if you look in the coconut in the back, don't know if you can see it, but she has been digging out sand all day. She just came out because she knows I am the food bringer. This little lady also has some eggs, and then this girl, this is a female Panduro. She's been on eggs for about three days. And I'll actually drop some food in for the ladies because they're probably pretty hungry. This is a Borrelii female. Who she has been on eggs for, mm, I've written down, I believe, four days. And I do overfeed all of my fish, especially when they're in eggs, because I have snails in the tank. So I'm able to feed the fish to their liking and then the snails clean up any leavings. This lady is super good with people, and when she sees me, she knows that I feed her and the fry, so she'll actually bring them up front and center in the morning. 
Oh, so I don't forget that. Look at all the little fry them. around her. Yep, she's a great mom. I actually got her and her mail off a gentleman who's keeping them in a 40-gallon community. Hi, baby girl. Hi. Do you want your food? Hello. And in here, I have the male McMaster eye with a second female. Well, as I think I said, I'm pretty sure she's on eggs and is just being a negligent mother. I'm not sure. I do know they did have eggs. And the way they've been behaving to each other, I feel like she's guarding something. But... They're very pretty. I'm waiting for... We'll see what happens. That's for sure. We do have a successful spawn from this male um, and his original female. Let's go outside in the backyard and let's... I want to see what new fish... Everybody wants to see what new fish you put into the grow-out tubs in the backyard. Um, speaking of new fish, I have a new little male betta here who's waiting to go into quarantine. I got him this morning. Very beautiful. I came in the kitchen and I was like, wait a minute, what's that? But I kind of, the same time I'm kind of used to that kind of thing. It didn't shock me too much. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. And Pedro's doing good. He's doing fantastic. Fat little boy. He is so fat. You put so many of those, uh, those fruit flies in there yesterday and there were there were none left this morning. Where is he? I can't even find He's him. Right He's right behind hiding. where the flower was on the cork bark. Okay. He is so fat this whole day today. He's just been like laying around, sitting in the sun, just uh, sitting in the light. And uh, you can see how swollen he is. <laughs> He's had a lot of fruit flies. He's a happy, a happy lizard. Pedro the lucky lizard. Well, the first thing is we have grass and it's green. The grass. the grass is getting green. It's filling in. Finally. It's starting to feel like you're getting somewhere. Yeah. So somewhere in here. Oh, are you are you hiding perfectly? Come here. Come here. Oh. This is one of my favorites for sure. I know. Come here. Oh, he is he's so fast. Figuring you out. They, oh, he's all the way at the bottom now. Yeah, Look at him. He's like, no, him. no, I know better. These are a group of sunburst platies. Let me get some of them up so we can see them. Oh, there's two, three. Oh yeah, they're pretty. Oh, don't easy. That's a very fat. The, uh, see the colors on them? Mm-hmm. Now part of why they're getting so pudge even though I'm feeding them the same as all of my other fish, is because out here we have ants that I've noticed climbing on the back wall. And then they climb all over on the tubs. Uh -huh, and I've and seen my bettas in. eating them. I've actually seen the bettas consume them. Oh yeah, their ants are on top of the duckweed. Yeah. Look at that. The ants are yeah. getting on top of the duckweed and then they eat them off of the duckweed. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh-huh. I feel like if you sat here long enough and filmed it, we could catch them doing it. There he is, pretty boy. Come here. Oh, this water is so... Oh! This water is so nice. Where'd you go? Oh, he's at the bottom too now. They're like, don't mess with us. Another update is, look at how big the squash is getting. Ooh. I know, they really are growing fast. But the fry, the guppy fry, speaking of growing fast. These guys, which we need to cover the rest of the tubs tonight, in case of fireworks. Oh, there's some in the basket even. Look at that. Oh yeah. Let's see if we have any other ones. The water's so nice. There's one with an interesting tail. See right here? Yeah, it's when he gets in the yellow. sunlight, you can really see him. You know, these colanders work great. Yeah, I really There's do. So like much, see how it just squeezed out and got away? Mm -hmm. They can fit through. There's quite a few nice fish growing out in here. There's a lot of fry. Like more than you think when you start actually dredging around in here. And then these guys are thriving. They're going to get moved into a 100 gallon. But look at, because she, she knows food comes from the top. My little blind Oscar who struggled to eat. <laughs> Hi. 
Yes, hi guys. I love how guys. she comes up and just like peeks. Hi guys. Yes, hi. That's not oh. food. Oh, she thinks she's getting fed. Like I said, she is, and that's that's actually something that comes with albinism. Um, is vision being affected and blindness? And this little male is getting a lot bolder too. They both really like the tubs. Hi, little girl. Hello. Yes. Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful 4th of July. Uh, I'm looking forward to some awesome food that this young lady is cooking. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to all of you that like, comment, and share on all of my content. It means so much to me. And remember guys, keep your tanks clean, your fish fed, and have fun.